Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I should be fiddling with my buttons again. As usual. <laughs> Was it Wednesday? Is it Wednesday today? It is Wednesday. It is Wednesday. Okay. I know it's 11 o'clock because we're doing the 11s this show. Happy Wednesday, everybody. I hope you are well. I am delighted to say the rain has stopped here after several days of really boring terrain. It went on and on, didn't it? Really did. Yeah. Got to the point where walking the dog became a challenge because when he came back to the house, there were no dry towels to dry him on. <laughs> so. I've nearly, I'm nearly done. That's nearly our little bit of domestic zone. news just to hopefully welcome a few people into our day. Oh, we've got mm. nine people already. Well, yeah, Marvellous. Well, up. you are up. going to be very excited today because we have a lovely guest to join us. We do. And what we're going for today is contrast with yesterday's guest. So yesterday we had a punk. Yeah, we did. John was very funny yesterday. Which was fab. <laughs> and today we're going not at all punk, but equally as wonderful. Drum roll again. Welcome to... Catherine Williams. Good morning, Catherine. Hi. Hi. I think it's fair to say you're not really very punk, isn't it? Um, well, when I was managed by Alan McGee, he told me that I was um, unplugged punk. <laughs> oh, okay. So I'll, I'll retract my statement and say you have been a bit punk. Well, and also I would say, I mean... <laughs> you, sleep, don't they? <laughs> I think, don't I remember, wasn't your first album recorded for some phenomenal your album the first album was like the buzzcocks first single like you recorded it for 80 pounds or something isn't it yeah, that's, that's, yeah. yeah um on downtime in studios and home recordings and um and then the mercury one was three thousand pounds so yeah everything's always been done on my label so i suppose i do have a punk art <laughs> yeah, yeah no that's true i do remember that at the time because it was a real like how on earth has she done this moment wasn't it <laughs> where people were absolutely focused on to do things with quality cost a lot of money and then you kind of came along and just exploded that yeah well I remember at the um at the Mercury's I was talking to Chris Martin and uh and I was asking him how I was like oh how much did your album cost it was parachutes and I think it was like it was like near to a um, half a million or something <laughs> and, uh, and I remember putting my hand on his shoulder and saying uh, let me give you a bit of advice, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to make any money if you <laughs> on, a, on an album. And then a few years later, I saw him. Um, we were in the BBC studios. I was doing some, some session. And he was walking towards me with Gwyneth Paltrow on his arm. And X, Y, had just happened. And I was just like, um, cringing. My arse was clenched. I was like, please don't see me. Please don't see me. <laughs> and he came up and he put his arm around me and said, hi, Kath. Thanks for the advice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was quite nice in a way, wasn't it? Yeah, it was lovely, yeah. <laughs> so, how are you doing? Well... I'm kind of, uh, if I don't watch the news and I don't think about the awful stuff that's happening, this is sort of how I've always wanted life to be. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's a good way of looking at I it. Don't, don't, I, that, I said that the other week. I, yeah. said I, get, I get way more work done if I don't have to go to pointless meetings and I can just get on with what I'm doing. Yeah. and Well, I'm at home with the kids and uh, we've got a... Um, a bakery in, in Newcastle, well, two bakeries that my husband owns. So he's working there a lot and doing a massive amount for the community. And mm. um, and I'm, I'm here in our garden and, like, weeding and doing, doing home education every morning till about two in the afternoon and then, and then attempting to do some housework. <laughs> but... Um, I've been on the hamster wheel of like work for the last, I mean, I've done 14 albums of my own and then I've written for everyone else around the world for 20 years. Mm. So like the first time I've ever really paused um, and you can't escape with any of your distractions. So I guess that you, you know, you have to sort of, I've had good days and bad days and I haven't wanted to do anything like this. It's the fifth week and it's the first thing I've done a live show. But it oh, feels like it's a it's a good reason because um you know the music venues uh, have been my 
that's my that's my sort of home away from home and mm -hmm. all the people who have looked after me over the years while I've been touring and I've done a long drive in my in my VW Polo and then they've they've welcomed me helped me get my gear out and made me a cup of coffee and I have been thinking about like loads of people who have looked after me over the years so I'd like to sing to them in return. <laughs> well, well, we really appreciate that, Catherine, because, you know, you are definitely one of us and one of our community. And so we were really chuffed when you said that you would come and offer us a song or two today. Yeah. Because, you know, that that's really nice. So I think at that point, basically, we should bugger we're, off. We're trying to bankrupt Spotify. I've realised that most everybody who comes on is people that we spend the whole day listening to on on the, on, <laughs> on Spotify. <laughs> Well, if you can if you can start something up that um, is like Spotify, but then doesn't cripple us, <laughs> yeah, then that'd be yeah. nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, maybe that's the next project after we've saved all the venues. Yeah, let's save the venues first, then we'll get we'll move on to that. We'll yeah. get that done. <laughs> so, if you got a song for us, Catherine, we'll step out and let you play, and we'll come back at the end. Oh yeah, I'll just I'm gonna, I think I'm going to do like a nice mellow one, and then a slightly more upbeat, sunshiny one. Great. Excellent. Okay. We'll leave you to it. This is called Picture Book. I've heard people say they like me and then laugh when I fail and some have said they own me but only give the price of betrayal but I think you're different and I want to let you in I can tell you my life and where I've been Like a book begins And if you could draw a picture of you what you think's inside would it be you or me we recognize and if you could draw a picture of you of what you think's inside would it be you or me we recognize Paint in the fields, the sky and the rain, and imaginings unset. Rub out the dark lights And sleeping in the cities of regret And if you could draw a picture of you Of what you think's inside Would it be you? Me we recognize and if you could draw a picture of you of what you think's inside, would it be you? Me we recognize I, I, Secrets are in our head Like cartoons flying in the air
talking about the elemental nature of some musicians and how music's going to come out almost well seemingly to the rest of us effortlessly and I'm <laughs> sure it doesn't always feel effortless to you but pounding. <laughs> <laughs> but it really just just flows out of you Catherine oh well it's weird because this um so last night I did one song for my friend Sylvie Lewis online for Huntington's disease because her dad, her mum had that and um, she's been feeling low and I felt like I needed to just sort of get out of myself and um, and get over it and do some singing. But like apart from that, and I did a FaceTime to my mum and dad of their favourite song, Dr Hook song, Sylvia's mother, and they were singing along and that was so nice. Apart from those two things, this is the first singing I've done in six weeks <laughs> and you've you've not been hit by the isolation creative bug that we've we've been talking with lots of people about that we suspect there might be in about nine months time there's gonna be hundreds of albums all around the themes of lockdown and <laughs> being isolated and being on your own well i was feeling really bad about it because i was seeing everyone do it and then not doing it myself and thinking what's wrong with me and then i, <laughs> I read that nick cave you know the red pan files yeah um, and he would as, get those emails every couple of weeks. And um, he was saying that it's fine to not feel it all the time. And actually what we're going through is we're sort of in history and we're in the eye of the storm. And it's okay to, to take your time and do it the way you want to do it. And I think as well what I've realised is like I don't just want to do I don't just want to sort of promote myself or do it. I want it to feel like I'm doing it for someone or for something. So to do it for you or to do it for the Huntington's disease, that feels okay because it's not going, hey, guys, what about me? <laughs> you know, <laughs> like doing something instead of just feeling like some sort of arsehole that, can't, that needs an audience. <laughs> but, but I think also for you, I mean, you said you've got the kids at home and you're trying to do homeschooling and trying yeah. to hit that balance between – work and home and family and it's really challenging isn't it I mean we're lucky our, our kids are old enough that they get on with their own thing and you know we see them at lunch and lunchtime and in the evening but they yeah. don't need us other than that but I think it's quite different if you you kind of got the responsibility for keeping an eye on the kids as well as trying to do everything else then that changes the whole dynamic doesn't it yeah well I mean this is my first work day um in the studio and I haven't been here it's, definitely hot in here <laughs> this week <window. laughs> the windows haven't been open for a long time but yeah I've sort of reveled in that sort of concentration and find you know I, I'm really good at GCSE level maths now which I've never done. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, well and, done. <laughs> and then I've been reading lots of books and doing like art with my younger one and I don't know it just feels like it's that the sort of virus side of things is horrific but the sort of the other things to take from it, realizing, I mean, I just really appreciate like my family and, you know, and normally I'm moaning about what's wrong with the house. And now I'm like, God, we've got a house, you know, we, we live in a house and we've got a garden. And, you know, I've been feeling like I've been my gran, like fixing things and mending things and making things like eggy bread or bread and butter pudding or anything that involves something a bit stale that you can make wet and then cook again. So, um, yeah, I, I feel and, – and also on our street, everyone's been looking after the older people and shopping for them, taking turns, and I've never spoken to so many neighbours and – the kindness of it all I just want that to continue yeah that's the really good side of it isn't it and it's really good to concentrate on the positives because 
as you, as you said, you know, you've got to keep away from the news. Otherwise, you can just disappear like into a hole about it. And that's not going to help any of us. And it certainly isn't going to help society. No. And I have to turn the. I have to personally turn my fear down so I'm not passing it on to the children. Yeah. Like, yeah. Ed, OK. And occasionally they'll ask questions and I'll be honest about it. But, um, you know, just watching rolling rolling news makes you i was talking to my neighbor about it because she was getting really worked up and i was like rolling news isn't good for you because it always makes you perpetually think that there's going to be some more information but there never is but it sort of drags you down and you know i i listen to the news once a day like or look at it once and then go right that's done because doing more it's not like a job to watch the news it's not going to change the situation and we're all doing what we need to do anyway, which is staying in. So yeah, I I finding up increasingly with the news. Actually, I I find news because that twenty four hour rolling cycle you mentioned, the news gets created to try and fill up all that time. Exactly. And then and then it doesn't really seem to get corrected. So I was talking to somebody only yesterday who was telling me about oh well the depressingly they were saying oh well the mortality rate isn't really up, and I said well it is. And they were like, oh, no, no, I've seen this. And you're like, that's about three weeks out of date. Yeah. But it's going round on social media. And then this new article, you know, the article from six months ago comes back saying this. And you're like, okay, but, and also with the way that things are these days with the global world, often people are telling you something that they think is happening right next door to them. And it's happening in a completely different country on a completely different continent. You know, there's, there's this government failure. But that's not us. That's another, yeah. you know. And it happens particularly bit. with the US, doesn't it? Where yeah. somebody says something in the US and people are like, well, this isn't going to happen till then. And you're like, but nothing's been said for the UK yet. Yeah. So, yeah, it's really unhealthy. And I think it's it's a really good thing to be doing to try and concentrate on what are the, I mean, obviously coping and getting through and supporting neighbours and family, but just concentrating on, you know, what are the positives of this? I mean, positive for us, we've actually managed to recruit loads of coordinators so they can talk more closely with venues around the country. And that's something we've wanted to do for absolutely ages. And yeah. bizarrely, it took a crisis for us to get the funding in place to do that. Yeah. So, you know, it's like, it's really terrible circumstances, but Music Venue Trust have finally been able to do something we've wanted to do for years which well, is needed, provide, needed to do. provide better support for our venues yeah. around the country because there's now somebody in every region of the UK that can turn up the venues. So it is that good news, bad news thing that I think we all need to try and sometimes sit back with our cuppa and think about. Yeah, there's a lot. I think there's a lot. <laughs> yeah. You not get one? Like, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I think there's a lot of, it's weird to say this, but I think there's a lot of really good personal connections yeah. being made in a time when we're being asked to not be personally connected, if that doesn't sound too weird. it's. Oh, well, I agree. You know. I know when we're trying to care for people. Oh, well, Sorry, Jason. Oh, Hawker, them. <laughs> I don't know if you know, we got a comment thing at the side, and Jace, Jace Hawker, who's one of the guys who's in the venues, he says. In Wales. In Wales, and he says, so you mean we're not opening on Friday, like the state of Georgia? <laughs> Just like that the kind of rumour we... I said to you, you know, sometimes up up at five o'clock in the morning, just dealing with all the rubbish that's coming overnight, just trying to go. Wait, you know, that's not us. What, like, like this government report isn't quite right because of that and everything else. That's exactly the sort of stuff we mean. Where you know, um, what was the, what was the one one last week? Oh, all live music is cancelled until autumn twenty twenty one. I'm like. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Nobody told well, us. Well, obviously not, because it's happening today <laughs> yeah, at so eleven season. I'm isn't watching it? some, so, so yeah, you know. <sighs> so, do you have a second song? Yeah, I'll do another one if you want. Um, yeah, hot <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll drop out again. Come back at the end. Okay. So pity. Uh, hot shaped stone. Heart shapes 
someone <laughs> <laughs> well, also, I mean we're just sitting here saying we're so so spoiled people coming and singing for us but of course it's actually for our community yeah. and you know we're, we're just the interface for that so thank you Catherine I'm sure there are an awful lot of people either watching now or that will watch it on the Facebook page and streams who will really love seeing you and oh. hearing from you oh well thank you and thanks to everyone who has looked after me on the road and um, love you all um nice to be part of the weirdo crew and um hope to be back on the road and seeing you all soon yeah okay. well we hope we'll see you really soon catherine you take care and enjoy enjoy your isolation and the positives you're getting from it yeah i'm gonna pretend, I'm gonna pretend that this is going on a little while longer and not really <laughs> You go for it. <laughs> I care. Hours and hours, and hours. I had to do 10 hours. hours. They wouldn't let me go. Are you still watching Peppa Pig? <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, my dear. We'll see you bye. soon. Bye. Well, that was lovely. That was really lovely. Yeah. We, were, we were saying, we were saying, well, Catherine was singing that we are definitely being spoiled here. We it's, are, it's yeah. like somebody arriving in the corner of your office that you really listen to a lot and love the music of just to sing you a little song. I know. Yeah. It's very nice. Well, we, we've got a few more set up and then we've got a massive great wish list of other people we who have, want to come indeed. and join us. Yeah. So if this carries on for four, for more weeks... It's going to get. It's my carry on pretending it's going. On. <laughs> well, so we just have people coming and singing for us anyway. <laughs> well, a... we we can do our best to do that. But yep. yeah, have a good day, everybody. Please do join us tomorrow when we've got another fab guest, and the following day, and the following day, day and, and, and on yeah, and on. we we're enjoying doing this. We hope other people are enjoying it too. Lovely we will to see, see you again all. soon. Goodbye. Goodbye. End broadcast. <laughs>